is the e-commerce coffee break the podcast dedicated to shopify store owners who want to optimize their business for maximum conversions and revenue each week you're going to get actionable advice and hear from special guests talking about various topics on how to run a profitable business on shopify learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host klaus lauter and get e-commerce insights you can't google welcome to the show Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today I want to talk about direct to customer experience. What does that mean? That's basically what's happening after somebody has ordered from you. Shipping and delivery is probably one of the most asked questions when it comes to support. And to get this right obviously helps a lot with turning customers. A happy customer will probably come back. A lot of Shopify store owners focus more on the front end, on the marketing side of things. But equally important, or not even more important than that, is to get the rest right. So therefore, I have Dana von der Heide with me today. She's the founder and chief commercial officer of Parcel Perform at parcelperform.com, a leading delivery experience platform for businesses covering 800 plus logistics carriers worldwide. Dana is also a member of the Distinguished E-Founder Fellowship Program by Alibaba, a network of international entrepreneurs and business leaders. And she also is co-host of the logistics podcast series called The Logistics Tribe. Also, she's on the advisory board of the German Logistics Association. So she has a vast background when it comes to everything, delivery, shipping, logistics, and so on. So let's dive into it. And hello, Dana, how are you today? Very good, very good. Thank you so much for having us. Dana, to get started, give me a bit of a background. Where are you coming from? How, what did you get started in logistics? Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. So I think by now I can fairly say I'm quite a logistics nerd, but that's not how my career started. I'm uh, originally, I studied psychology and communication science, but I went into logistics pretty quick. So I worked for DHL, global logistics company, did corporate strategy roles. And, you know, in my time there, I really realized that there's one kind of big gap in the industry, which is making data accessible and standardized. So uh, a lot of merchants out there can optimize kind of everything that is logistics related make better decision and create a better customer experience so uh, yeah I, I stuck with the industry and uh, now more than six years ago started pass perform i'm right now here in singapore which is where i lived for quite a long time uh, but usually i'm based in berlin okay so what makes it so difficult to get the delivery right so getting the delivery right is difficult per se, but what is even more difficult, and this is what we are solving, is to get the experience behind that right, because everyone is delivering parcels. There's you know, more than a thousand different carriers in the world, uh, and getting the delivery right is really hard. You know, Things can happen, traffic is bad, they lose parcels uh, almost every day, but the question is, even if this happens, right, and this is something that the merchant cannot control because that's really in the hand of the delivery companies, the question is, what do you do to make this experience still an intuitive, consistent one that kind of creates loyalty and trust with your customers. And this is actually quite hard because as we see specifically also in the D2C industry, everyone is working with multiple carriers. If you ship in one country, maybe one carrier is enough, but we even see there's a diversification there. But D2C brands, they're expanding internationally, operate in multiple markets. So you work with multiple carriers and they all kind of have their own uh, web sites where they update customers. One problem is, you know, if you ship internationally, let's say Germany to Singapore, uh, no one wants to see the German events on the Deutsche Post website, right? Uh, here in Singapore, they want to get in their language. But better so for customer experience for the DTC brands is to have this information on their website. You know, we know this from Amazons and the like, where instead of sending your customer away, you keep them on your web shop, you manage this part of the experience. And even then, you know, someone loses your parcel at least the customer doesn't have to like hassle to find this information to be updated but the d2c brands know themselves they can do proactive communication and they can manage that customer experience to drive loyalty mm -hmm. so obviously tracking and predicting when it will be arriving is the most important information for the customer i mean that's what i said to you most customer support requests are coming from that direction if you don't have the right system in place how in a perfect world would you set up this whole flow of getting your customer excited about the shipment and when it will arrive 
Yeah, so um, fantastic question. I think the key is to get all data into one place and then you can work with this data for your internal visibility, for delivery notification and all that. What we're seeing in the market is obviously a lot of D2C brands, I think you mentioned it yourself, work on Shopify stores. Um, and then, you know, especially if you have multiple brands or multiple markets, you sometimes also have multiple Shopify stores that you're running at the same time, meaning your data is already not consistent throughout these stores. What we do at Passive Perform is no matter how many uh, Shopify environments you have, you connect into one Passive Perform account automatically. We don't want to bother your IT departments. It's two clicks and all your shipping data, uh, as well as your customer information, as well as order information, automatically gets absorbed into Passive Perform. So you get a dashboard of what is happening. You see all information on who was the customer, what's the latest status of a shipment, when will it arrive, and anything else that you need to know. And then what we are also seeing is specifically in D2C, uh, these brands are now working with like other operators. They could send emails via Passive Perform. It's all fully white labeled, but they often also use tools like Klaviyo, for example, where they then use them to trigger out notifications. Now, we believe you shouldn't force a brand um, to basically do everything via Passive Perform, but to integrate neatly into their environment of software tools. Georgias is another one for customer service. So it's important that we also on our side from one Passive Perform account are able to then connect back into all your other systems to trigger uh, the creation of tickets automatically. Whenever the carrier says the parcel is missing, lost, or late, we can automatically create a customer service ticket. Or even more importantly, we can kind of create a trigger, for example, in Clavio or with our own notifications and inform the client. So you avoid that they kind of find out by digging on the carrier website, but you proactively communicate in your own branding, very, very important. And you can just build this loyalty also after the purchase, which obviously is super important since you spend so much marketing dollars winning this customer, you should also invest in retaining them. Okay, now I like that. I mean, obviously, I'm biased. I'm a Klaviyo and Shopify partner, so I like to hear that this completely integrates into, into these systems. Now, when it comes to compliance, obviously, you're handing over or you're handing over a lot of customer data to these shipping companies, to all these systems. A lot of countries are coming up with um, GDPR and similar solutions when it comes to compliance and um, data protection. How do you deal with that? Yeah, also a super important point. Um, so uh, when we handle the data, we are fully GDPR compliant. But what is actually super interesting is right now, a lot of brands are giving their data to the carriers, uh, which means that you should generally get the approval from the carrier, uh, from the end consumer that you can pass on this data. But that's usually like an opt-in kind of process. And a lot of people haven't done that. So I think uh, this gray zone of letting the carrier notify your end customers is already a risk and this is why it's super powerful to build this process in-house because when you sign up a customer they in every standard t's and c's also for for shopify clients they agree to be notified on this specific delivery but they agree to be notified towards the shop right because they got the money that's where i ordered so with our service you actually communicate as the shop no one knows that parcel performance behind this um, and you actually kind of are much more in line with GDPR than uh, passing this information to the carriers and let them communicate it. And then, of course, on our side, we, we sign all the necessary kind of agreements called standard contractual clauses to be fully GDPR compliant, host our data in Europe, all that sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. How does the uh, merchant deal with returns, return shippings? Does that go through your system or do they have to connect to the um, delivery service? How does that work? Yeah, also a huge topic uh, that we see right now in the market. So there's two things on returns um, that are important to differentiate that sometimes get mixed up. You have involuntary returns, and this is actually quite a big one. So you send out something, but for some reason, the parcel never made it to the end recipient. In some markets, you have cash on delivery, so they didn't have the money, then they couldn't find the address. And it's super crucial that you also manage this process extremely well. 
let's say you know the parcel went back um, with our system we can give you a ping that the parcel didn't uh, hit the recipient so you can immediately do the cash remittance and the earlier you give them back their money the more likely they're gonna uh, buy the same also for the returns process um, that you do voluntarily so you want to return something i think that's probably like a whole entire different coffee chat uh, we have a lot of best practices but we absolutely also support on that it's a process of deciding should the label already be in the parcel or do you want to generate it later kind of what's the return policies but what we believe is very important is that you also make this super intuitive so we have a widget that you can plug into your shopify store you don't have to develop anything we pass you over the code and in this widget where we show where the delivery is you should also immediately be able to facilitate your return so it's a truly integrated experience convenient and i think the times are over where retailers try to avoid returns i think at this stage everyone should make returning easy because it's been proven the easier that process is the more kind of uh, reselling and upselling you can do later on mm -hmm. give me a bit of an insight on what's happening in the shipping industry right now um, everyone reads about delays and container ships getting stuck somewhere so delivery times are getting high and specifically in, in shopify world with um, drop shipping and d2c stores lots of stuff's coming from asia from china shipped all over the world massive delays what, what's what's happening there just giving a bit of a background Yeah, I think there was never a better time to talk about logistics because uh, by now everyone realized what a huge impact it has on their lives. You, you said it yourself, what's happening right now, you know, first we had the Suez Canal, then we had supply shortage in times of COVID because no one was in the warehouse. Now Shanghai is in lockdown right now. If you look at the pictures at the port, I mean, it's all, almost art. Yeah, it's fascinating. But I haven't seen such a block port ever in my life. And I've been in logistics for a while. So it, it, it's, it's huge. Um, what to do with this? I think the most important thing is that you know where your deliveries are even on the first mile. And this is also super critical, right? Like we all think about the customer, great. But if one step to get a parcel to the customer, the very first one is that it needs to hit your warehouse. And for that, you need to know where the deliveries are on the way to your warehouse as well, because that's the true end-to-end -end process that we're seeing. And that's why a lot of the clients that we're working with, you know, um, Water Drop, but also pick up brands like Nespresso, they try to really do end-to-end -end visibility. Um, from like uh, tracking anything that goes into the warehouse to anything that happens in the warehouse to anything that goes to the customer. One decision one then has to take is how much you want to expose the end-to-end -end process to the client because obviously no customer wants to see that something is stuck and it's also not that much of an immediate it comes from there it directly goes out there's cross stocking and storage and all that but having that visibility of what your first mile does to also make sure you place your marketing campaigns right we're seeing this so much you know like you're advertising a product and then you realize it wasn't even in stock worst possible customer experience so Get transparency, not just on your last mile. Don't just make it intuitive for your customers, but make it intuitive for your own operations people to even know what's coming on the first mile is key. Okay. Talking about the last mile, as a merchant, what would you recommend? What should be sort of your value proposition there? I mean, we see Amazon Prime with 24-hour delivery. Um, certain areas in the US, they try to deliver within 15 minutes or something like that. So obviously people getting this in their mind and think okay that's happening from everything from a merchant side how should you communicate how you, do you deliver how quickly it goes yeah this is uh, also something very much talked about i have a bit of a different stance on this i don't believe and we've seen this with our customers that it needs to be as fast as possible first of all also because that's not sustainable and if you look at the new generations they care about the co2 footprint they care about sustainability But what is really important is that it's there at the right time. People want to plan their lives. Hopefully we can all leave our house, go on holidays, go to the office. If the parcel arrives and you're not at home, it can be as fast as it, uh, it could be, but like you didn't get it. So this element of predictability and choice, I think, is very important. 
So if uh, merchants can give their customers a choice, and we see this with some brands to say, do you want to make this a little slower? Do you want us to combine shipments, but you know, uh, be a more conscious on a sustainability effort? Do you maybe want us to deliver this to a parcel locker or a parcel shop because they are always open and then you just go uh, and collect it whenever convenient? I think these are very big topics, the element of choice at checkout. And I think we should trust customers to be able to make that choice uh, more and more because they want to. The second element is predictability. Um, carriers basically at the moment they uh, give you an EDD an estimated delivery date but it only comes in once the carrier collected the parcel but, well that's mighty too late because you already made the order and you cannot stop it anymore so I think we should learn from the Amazons of the like and actually be able to predict when a parcel arrives at checkout and it's also something that we're driving here at Parcel Perform we have a machine learning algorithm because what you really need to do again it's a matter of data right if it's a rule-based thing and if you check out now it's three days even if that's wrong still bad experience so you got to have all your data together standardize it you need to know what is in the parcel who's the customer which carrier it's going to go to to actually be able to predict that but that's exactly the benefit of the likes of amazon because they would actually tell you what's going on there and it can be replicated for any merchant if they invest in this data play as well mm -hmm. Your platform obviously um, brings all the data from these different data sources together. Who's your perfect customer? Who should work with Parcel Perform? So yeah, we are open to anyone that ships parcels, but obviously D2C brands for us, it's a huge thing because um, it's just so quickly to set up. Um, there's no integration efforts, two clicks to connect your Shopify store. We do the Clavio stuff and we love this industry. I mean, it's high growth, you know, obviously uh, it's predicted to be a, what, 150 billion market in uh, 2022, even more next year. So even though a lot of D2C companies are still below 1 million, and, you know, from a company perspective we love those that ship a lot of volume but we really believe in this segment and it's so easily done that uh, we'd love to get all the d2c brands and help them on their growth on their internationalization because as they grow they need more data across all these different carriers personalization and languages uh, so we'd be honored to support them there as well okay before we finish give me one golden nugget for a merchant what should they do um, well, uh, you know, acknowledge that it's not just about winning customer, it's about kind of building loyalty after checkout. You can burn as much marketing dollars as you can on gaining customers there. But I think the real goal nugget is to focus on post-purchase control that experience because that will save you a lot of marketing dollars and generate a really loyal customer base. Very good tip. I have been there and I know how painful it can be to deal with shipping that does not arrive. People are not informed where it is. Real pain in the neck. So 100% right there. Dana, thanks so much for your time. Where can people find out more about your services? Yeah, come on our website, parcelperform.com. If they want insight and logistics reports, we have a community page where we give a free reports on parcelmonitor.com uh, or parcelperform.com, our, our company website, or just find me on LinkedIn. I'd be more than happy to connect uh, Dana von der Heide, uh, Parcel Perform. Very easy to spot us anywhere. Okay, sounds great. I will put the links in the show notes and people can click right through there. Again, mm -hmm. thanks so much for the time. It was lovely to chat to you and learn a little bit more about all this part of e-commerce business and talk soon. Thank you very much for having me. Bye-bye. Hey, Klaus here. If you're a Shopify store owner and you're feeling stuck, overwhelmed, and not sure what to do next to grow your business, you struggle to convert traffic into sales or turn website visitors into buyers, and you want to like have direct access to a mentor who can assist you with your store, strategy, offer, marketing, sales, and anything else you need, then I would like to invite you to apply for my Get Conversions program, where I show you how to remove the guest work out of growing your Shopify business and create clarity to optimize your business for maximal growth and profit. It's a application only program to apply go to my website klauslauter.com to learn more and finally please do not forget to subscribe like and comment and i would be grateful if you would leave a quick honest rating and review over at apple itunes it's a huge help and allows me to reach more people with the podcast thanks in advance and until next time at the e-commerce coffee break